And that's where we start a baseball event honoring East Lake's Micah Pietla Wiggs. Good evening, I'm Moses Small. A beloved East Lake High School athlete and former Little League star, sadly Micah was killed in a car crash in January of this year. And from that grief, his family started a foundation to honor him and help others. ABC 10 News reporter Madison Weil at East Lake High School tonight where their first annual home run derby took place. It was a great turnout here at East Lake High on Sunday afternoon, and after being out here, it's so clear what a loved member of the community Micah was. Dozens of friends, family, and baseball teammates gathered for the first ever long ball and home run derby in Micah's honor. He was a ray of sunshine, always happy, always super enthusiastic about anything he did. Micah was just 21 years old when he was tragically killed in a car crash while driving near the San Ysidro port of entry. He was a beloved athlete, playing both baseball and football at East Lake High, and before that... Look at how a star Little League player who helped lead his team to the 2013 Little League World Series in Pennsylvania. Sunday's Derby event served as a fundraiser for the foundation started by Micah's family. All proceeds will help support high school seniors who embody the same standout qualities that Micah had. He's an amazing person, always tries to make people laugh, and he's, he's, just, he's just a really good person and just always a joy to be around. There's one thing I took from Micah is enthusiasm, always having a smile on your face, always radiating that with the people that are around you. Micah's father says being back on the baseball field all together brings some comfort. He hopes everyone takes away one thing. Just a reminder uh, to stay, uh, keep your, your friends close and your family close, uh, the community close, um, and don't take anything for granted. Um, you, you never know when it's the last time you're going to be able to say I love you or, or see someone for their last time. The family has a website for that foundation they've started. If you'd like to make a donation in Micah's honor, we have that link posted on our website, 10news.com. In East Lake, Madison Weil, ABC 10 News. Now to an ABC 10 News follow-up. We now know the name of the pilot who died yesterday after crashing his plane at Montgomery Gibbs Executive Airport. Andre Roosevelt Green crashed his plane as he was preparing for takeoff. Green then became trapped inside. When fire responders arrived, they had to extricate him from the wreckage. Green was taken to the hospital where he later died. There's no word yet on what caused the crash. And Del Mar Beach is now open after a woman was bitten by a shark on Friday. The woman spoke to ABC 10 News exclusively and tells us she was bit in the leg while swimming. She's now in recovery. According to lifeguards, the beach opened as of 9 this morning. Now to a crime alert in East County. A teen is in the hospital recovering after he was shot in the back. The shooting happened near El Capitan High School near the intersection of Ashwood and Mapleview Street at 1 in the morning today. Deputies say the teen's injuries were not considered to be life-threatening, but the gunman has not been caught. The cause of the shooting right now is unknown. They ate the wrong Wheaties this morning or whatever the hell their excuse is. Get out and vote. Election Day is just 48 hours away, but people still have a chance to cast their ballots early at more than 200 voting centers across the county. ABC 10 News reporter Ryan Hill visited the Registrar of Voters office where he spoke with several of those voters. Election Day is upon us, but many are still taking this time to vote early. Anyone else out there that feels that maybe that too late in the day or they ate the wrong Wheaties this morning or whatever the hell their excuse is, get out and vote. Up in Del Mar, people like Rita Cecil are taking advantage of San Diego County's early voting sites. It's a make or break situation and I want to be on the winning side, clearly. Whatever side that is, I'll leave it up to you, but I'm here to make my vote count. There are some important races happening in the San Diego area for this midterm election. Some of them getting national attention considering President Joe Biden flew into San Diego for the first time in his presidency. Biden was stumping for Congressman Mike Levin as he goes against businessman Brian Marriott. To me, it signified the fact that um, someone needed to be here to motivate a base. So it depends on what side of the um, voting public you're on. And in the South Bay, voters in Chula Vista are deciding who their next mayor will be between City Council Member John McCann and Amar Campanajar. We always feel that the franchise to vote 
is one of the most important rights we have. And we don't always agree on who we vote for either. It's the power of the people exercising their power of the vote, all hoping their voices are heard. Everybody have a right to vote. It's a freedom to vote, you know. Ryan Hill, ABC 10 News. From local elections to those miles away, the latest ABC News Washington Post poll shows the economy and inflation are two of the most important issues for voters across the country. ABC's Mary Alice Parks explains how these topics are affecting the battle for control of Congress. Americans' frustration over the economy and President Biden's low approval rating have Republicans feeling confident they will gain back control of both the House and the Senate. The latest ABC News Washington Post poll shows that the economy and inflation top the list of issues most important to likely voters. Democratic Senator Cory Booker admits his party faces a difficult election on Tuesday, but still he says he sees a path for Democrats to keep control of the Senate. And even though our economy is tough, people think about it and say, wait a minute, this is the party trying to protect unions. This is the party that made sure we did things to lower prescription drug costs and lower health care costs. But Virginia's Republican governor, Glenn Youngkin, believes voters will send a wake up call to the president and elect Republicans to regain full control of both chambers of Congress. I hope that President Biden sees what Americans are, are, are going to are going to say to him on Tuesday, which is we're not happy and we need a different agenda. Pennsylvania is one of the battleground states that could decide which party controls the Senate. Both sides sending in some political star power. President Biden and former President Obama joining forces at a rally for Democratic Senate candidate John Fetterman and gubernatorial candidate Josh Shapiro. Truth and facts and logic and reason and basic decency are on the ballot. Former President Trump campaigning for the Republican ticket in Pennsylvania, Doug Mastriano running for governor, and Senate candidate Dr. Mehmet Oz. If you want to stop the destruction of our country and save the American dream, then this Tuesday you must vote Republican. Americans are turning out, and that has Democrats feeling optimistic. The number of early ballots cast has surpassed the number of early voters during the last midterm election in 2018. Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, Washington. Happening tomorrow, city and county leaders will hold a roundtable to discuss homelessness amongst veterans. During tomorrow's event, three formerly homeless San Diego veterans will share their stories with hopes to invoke change on how unsheltered veterans get help. We hope to bring you updates from tomorrow's event. And still to come, Iran making a revelation about the war in Ukraine, claiming they did supply Russia with drones. The reason President Zelensky says Iran is lying next. Plus, inaction is myopic and can only defer climate catastrophe. The fight against climate change at center stage as global leaders work to find new ways to save our planet. The last two Super Bowl winners square off and it goes down to the final seconds. That and the building excitement for Aztecs basketball season at 11.30 on Virgin Hotels Las Vegas Sports Extra. Turning now overseas to the crisis in Ukraine. For the first time, Iran is now admitting that it did supply drones to Russia. But Iranian officials say they did it before the start of the war. Those drones have been blamed for recent attacks on critical infrastructure. ABC's Tom Sufi Burridge is in Kiev tonight. Tonight, a stunning reversal from Iran, admitting it has supplied Russia with killer drones, which have terrorized Ukrainian cities for weeks. But Iran claiming it sent those drones before Vladimir Putin's full-scale invasion. Ukraine's President Zelensky saying Iran is lying. The drones slamming into dozens of power stations, leaving four and a half million homes without electricity. Kiev's mayor today warning residents to be prepared to evacuate from the city in case there is a total loss of power, heat and water. This is what downtown Kiev looks like every night. The street lights are off and there are rolling blackouts throughout this city. Tonight, darkness in the Kuzmenko family home. We met them just earlier when the lights were on. Elisa is 16. We can't cook without light. We can't work, study. On the battlefield, Ukraine now only making incremental gains, with the US reportedly asking for a change of tone from Zelensky. 
The Washington Post saying the Biden administration is privately encouraging Ukraine to at least keep the door open for future peace talks with Vladimir Putin. Tom Sufi Burridge, ABC News, Kiev, Ukraine. Delegates from nearly 200 countries kicked off the UN Climate Summit in Egypt today with their goal to implement change to tackle the climate crisis. The outgoing chair of the talks said countries have made considerable progress, including getting more ambitious targets for cutting emissions and pledging to phase out the use of coal. This comes as the world sees multiple climate amplified disasters just this year alone, leading to more urgency to reduce our influence on Earth's warming before it gets even more dangerous. Part of implementation is everybody, everywhere in the world, every single day, doing everything they possibly can to address the climate crisis. This year's negotiations will focus on three main ideas, how to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, helping vulnerable countries adapt, and finding money for countries where climate change is causing irreversible harm. Now, the ABC 10 News Pinpoint Weather Super 7-Day Forecast. Taking a look at the forecast here at home, Mother Nature gave us the perfect fall weekend over the past couple of days. And now Mother Nature is deciding we need a little bit of rain, but not quite yet. San Diego, nice and partly cloudy this evening. It's just 60 degrees with a very calm breeze coming the, from the east, humidity at 80 percent. And elsewhere around the county, we're seeing these nice, comfortable, cool temperatures. And this is, what, for the most part, what we'd expect for this time of year. Escondido, 53. Vista, 55. Del Mar at 57 degrees at the moment and looking into the mountains, Julian at 48, Alpine at 50 degrees right now. And tomorrow we're going to see a continuation of that cool down trend, but the biggest development is going to be the rain. It's going to start coming in very slowly during the afternoon and the evening hours as San Diego reaches up to 65 degrees, inland 66, our mountain communities reaching only into those lower 50s with some pretty considerable wind gusts as fast as 40 miles per hour, and then into the desert, a high of 79 degrees with similarly breezy conditions. And we can see with the seven day chance of rain, those peak shower activities come on Tuesday. It falls right on top of election day. So you could see some slick weather heading to the polls. And we could see some showers early in the day, rolling all the way through into Wednesday afternoon. And it dries out after that. But the future cast shows how quickly it really ramps up after a relatively slow start on Monday. The second we get into Tuesday afternoon into Tuesday evening, the rain gets more and more substantial. And then on Wednesday, we start seeing some peak activity clearing out later in the day heading forward to Thursday, and there's even a possibility of some snow in those higher elevations. Meantime, it looks like San Diego's in for a pretty good drench. That is countywide. San Diego itself could receive more than three quarters of an inch. La Jolla getting nearly an inch. Escondido, Vista, Fallbrook getting nearly an inch and a quarter of rain. So we're in for a substantial soak no matter where you are, with the exception of the desert. They're expecting very little rainfall, stark contrast from the rest of the county. Surprisingly, not many watches and warnings. The only things we have are this little flash flood watch that are really from north of San Diego County that just trickle over to that area right north of Camp Pendleton. Futurecast shows a cool air mass moving towards us at the same time. That's going to bring down our temperatures. So we're going to see rain on the one hand and some cold on the other. Just take a look at these temperatures. A high of 65 for tomorrow in San Diego. Wednesday, a high of 60 degrees. That is about 10 degrees above average. And by the time we get to Wednesday in our inland community, Communities, a high of 58. That is 18 degrees below average. And we're going to see some similarly chilly weather. They get nearly freezing Wednesday going into Thursday and into the desert, peaking out in the 60s on Thursday. State funds are coming to San Diego to help promote bicycle and pedestrian safety. The $125,000 will help fund several activities, such as social media campaigns to promote safety and active transportation topics. There will also be open streets events encouraging biking and walking. And with the funds, the county will be able to offer bicycle and scooter skills training courses that educate safe riding behaviors. Survivors and supporters taking over Balboa Park as they fight to end breast cancer. Skycam Views, sponsored by Carlsbad Solar. The mission to end breast cancer continues. Today, 6,000 San Diegans packed Balboa Park for the Susan G. Komen More Than Pink Walk. Among the crowd were survivors and loved ones hoping to raise breast cancer awareness. Mary Lee McNeil, a survivor, tells ABC 10 News her and her team have raised half a million dollars. But it's not just how much money that can make a difference. McNeil also encourages all women to get checked. 
Sometimes diseases and illnesses are obvious, but breast cancer is not obvious. So I had no symptoms. And so every year I've been getting a mammogram and from one year to the next, there was changes that I didn't even know about. If you couldn't attend today's event, you can still donate to the Susan G. Komen Foundation. Meantime, a new type of antibiotic to treat urinary tract infections will soon be submitted for FDA approval ahead of schedule. That's a big deal because it's the first antibiotic developed for UTIs in more than 20 years. The new antibiotic is a pill called Gepatitisin. The drug maker GSK says it will prepare its findings for publication in a medical journal and submit its data to the FDA for approval next year. That's about a year ahead of the study's anticipated completion date. New antibiotics are desperately needed because over time, many kinds of bacteria have become resistant to the agents used to treat them. And a new study out of Australia suggests picking your nose could increase your risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. Griffith University researchers published the study in the journal Scientific Reports after examining the ability of bacteria to travel up the nose and into the brain in mice. Researchers say the cells in the brain respond to the bacteria by creating markers that are a telltale sign of Alzheimer's disease. The scientists are now working to prove the same pathway exists in humans. There are warning that picking your nose can damage the nose's lining and that could increase how many bacteria travel that path to the brain. A Texas man wins big after the Houston Astros win the World Series. What he plans to do with $75 million next. The Powerball jackpot just keeps getting bigger after no one won last night's drawing of $1.6 billion. But one Encinitas resident did match five of those numbers, only missing the Powerball. That ticket was worth more than a million dollars, and that ticket was sold at a Rite Aid pharmacy. Two others in Northern California also matched the five numbers, but not the Powerball. The next drawing is tomorrow. That jackpot now estimated at $1.9 billion. Meantime, one man in Texas is celebrating tonight as if he won the lottery, and it's all thanks to the Houston Astros winning the World Series last night. Mattress Mack, a furniture store owner whose real name is Jim Mackingvale, won a $75 million sports bet. While some are calling it the largest payout in sports betting history, Mattress Mack says the real winner will be his customers. Seeing the Astros win and refunding this $70, $75 million, wow. this is some delighted customers. It'll, it'll be an experience of a lifetime for our customers. Customers who bought certain mattresses costing $3,000 or more will get their money back. That promotion is not that unusual for the store's owner who is famous for his huge betting on sports. McInville gives all the credit to his hometown Astros. He says, quote, they did all the work. All I did was bet the money, unquote. And the Chargers trying to fumble away a victory only to get a surprise gift in Atlanta. That's coming up. Plus, the Rams look to keep Tom Brady out of the end zone to secure a win in Tampa. Virgin Hotels Las Vegas Sports Extra is next. Now, the Virgin Hotels Las Vegas Sports Extra. It's the eve of what appears to be an incredibly promising college basketball season at San Diego State. Welcome to the show. I'm Ben Higgins. We'll take a closer look at the 19th ranked Aztecs in a couple of minutes. But first, no one expected that when the last two Super Bowl champions met in week nine of this NFL season, both would have losing records, but that was the case for the Rams and Bucks today, making it a pretty crucial game for both teams. Down 3 0 in the second quarter, the Rams would take the lead with their most tried and true combination. Matthew Stafford to Cooper Cup, who races 69 yards for the touchdown. That was enough for the Rams to hold the lead until the fourth quarter, trying to keep Tom Brady out of the end zone with less than two minutes to go. And the Rams get the stop on the incompletion on fourth down. But the Bucs would get another chance, driving to the one with 13 seconds left. And this time, Brady comes through. He finds Cade Otten as the only touchdown of the game for the Bucs as the game winner, 16 to 13, the final. Rams have lost four of their past five, while the Bucs snap a three-game skid. Uh, we needed it. We needed it. We got it. We fought to the end. Defense played great. Made some plays offensively. You know, we've got to really figure out a lot of different things to be able to do. And we got to, you know, whether it's different players, whether it's different scheme, different things like that. But this is not good enough. Um, and I have to do better, too. All right, wild ending in Atlanta where the Falcons hosted the Chargers. Tied at 17. Chargers trying to set up a potential game-winning field goal in the final minute when Austin Eckler loses the football. It's picked up by Falcons defensive lineman Taquan Graham. He rumbles the other way, then drops the football. Chargers recover the fumble. 
One play later, they'd be back in field goal range for kicker Cameron Dicker, who signed this week as an injury replacement. And he drills the 37-yard game winner as the Chargers pull one out. 2017, the win over the Falcons. Raiders trying to find some momentum in Jacksonville. Looked good early. The fake end around, and Derek Carr finds Devontae Adams deep for his second touchdown of the game. 17-0 Las Vegas, but the Jaguars would come all the way back. First play of the fourth quarter, Jacksonville takes the lead on Travis Etienne's second touchdown run. A pair of final drives for the Raiders both fell short as the Jags rally for a 27-20 win. Well, a win over UNLV yesterday has San Diego State just a victory away from bowl eligibility. And while it may be the famous Idaho Potato Bowl or the New Mexico Bowl in the Aztecs' future, it's better than the alternative. The old formula of timely defense and big turnovers led to the 14-10 victory over the Rebels as SDSU picked off UNLV quarterback Doug Brumfield twice, doubling his entire season total. Aztecs were able to get their first touchdown pass to Jesse Matthews, who made a great individual effort here to find the end zone. And due to the years of pandemic and stadium construction, it was also a special moment for the local senior out of Christian High School. Just being home in San Diego, I actually scored my first touchdown in San Diego today, so that was a pretty special moment for me. Um, and just being in front of my family and friends um, and them being here is something very, very special to me. Um, so I'm just grateful. I'm, I'm so grateful to be in this position that I'm in. I'm glad that we came out with the win. The Aztecs are facing what could be the toughest of their three remaining games when they host San Jose State on Saturday night. Well, the 19th ranked Aztecs open the college basketball season tomorrow night at Vieja Serena when they host Cal State Fullerton. Steve Smith talked to two of the team's key players, a pair of fifth year seniors who returned for different reasons. A lot of excitement on the Mesa this year as the Aztecs have what has been called a loaded roster this season. One that includes a few fifth-year seniors like Nick.